our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. The 16th of February, 2011. Kourou in Guyana was the setting for the latest Ariane 5 launch. Europe's 780-ton heavy launcher was taking the Johannes Kepler supply vessel up to the International Space Station. It was the 42nd successful launch in a row of the Ariane 5. This success this reliability and success rate can be put down to two things. The first is surely our long experience and skills, a pool of European competence built up over years, two generations of European engineers. The second can be attributed to processes from design to construction and quality control. These allow us to filter out any defects or technical risks with the end result that when we push the button, we are sure or virtually sure the launcher will complete its mission. Le Muro, 40 kilometers west of Paris, is where Astrium builds Ariane's first stage. The 30-meter-long rockets filled with 150 tons of liquid oxygen and 25 tons of hydrogen that will be consumed in a matter of minutes by the mighty cryogenic Vulcan 2 motor. When you watch an orchestra, you don't ask yourself where the first violin or clarinetist comes from. Your eyes go to the conductor to see if he or she leads their players and makes beautiful music. We are in a similar position. Astrium also has that role, coordinating input to the launcher assembled in its works with parts built in 12 European member states. Orchestrating this music from a common score to ensure that, when the fat lady sings, the concert is a success and the rocket leaves the launch pad. Different components of the launcher are built all around Europe and then sent across the Atlantic by ship. The space center at Kourou in Guyana is charged with carefully putting the pieces of the puzzle together. The rocket then heads to the launch pad and the countdown begins. It all started in the 1960s at the height of the Cold War when Europe wanted its own space industry. The first satellites were built and then had to be launched, but that proved a far trickier task. Germany and France had decided to develop a small but commercial communication satellite. They needed to launch and they went to see the Americans, which told them that if ever they would launch, it should not be for commercial purposes. And they had to accept that the satellite was not for commercial purposes. And then the American launcher uh, launched the satellite. That was presumably the igniter for the French side to say we need independent access. And they defended this in the context of this newly created organization, what became ESA. Ralph Jaeger is a pioneer. He lived through all the birth pains and problems of the fledgling Ariane program that eventually became the world's number one launcher. From its first flight in 1979, Ariane 1 went through several development stages until the last flight of Ariane 4 in 2003. Its versatility had allowed it to snatch more than 50% of the global market for commercial launches. I think without Ariane, we would not have been able to create a autonomous European satellite manufacturing industry because you would not have been able to demonstrate this. We would not have been able to create a very strong insurance industry or consulting and of course a very strong rocket industry in Europe. At the Musée de l'Air et de l'Espace at Bourget Airport in Paris, an Ariane 5 dominates the exhibits. 
The European Space Agency's director of launches explains the guiding lines steering strategy to keep Ariane in the number one spot for commercial launches. Ultimately, what are our objectives? Making sure Europe has an independent access to space and also to be a key player in the commercial market so that our aerospace industries can grow. Obviously, the competition is very strong and we will have to continue to develop our launchers. We will see how they can adapt to the market demands and we'll do everything we can to go in the right direction. It's essential that we think about the future. At Ariane Espace headquarters in Evry near Paris, the future is almost today. Reminders are everywhere. 2011 will be a particularly rich one for new European aerospace products. The 2011 will be the continuation of the dynamism of previous years, but one novelty will be the first flight of Soyuz from Guiana at the end of the summer. It's a medium-sized launcher, smaller than Ariane 5. We have worked with Russia for many years. This is the 22nd Soyuz launch we've been involved in, all of them successful from Baikonur in Kazakhstan. ESA and Ganes, Ariane Spas, and our Russian partners built the launch pad, which is now ready. At the Sinamari site in Guiana, the articulated support arms characteristic of the Soyuz launch pad are in place. Modified versions of the rocket are being assembled in a hangar nearby. A new era is beginning for this venerable launcher, whose first versions put Sputnik and Yuri Gagarin into orbit. It's flown 1,700 times with a 98% success rate, a symbol of Russian excellence. Soon, thanks to the slingshot effect it will get from a near-equatorial launch, it'll be able to double its payload compared to Baikonur. The new baby, and it mustn't be forgotten because it's very important, is Vega. ESA is developing this launcher for small useful payloads for Earth observation and scientific programs. Its first flight is this year, so 2011 is more than aptly named as the year of the launchers. Vega's launch pad is nearly complete. Italy came up with the design and it's built at Colleferro, 100 kilometers south of Rome. It uses a construction technique from the world of Formula One racing. Layers of woven carbon fiber glued together at high temperature to increase strength and reduce weight. It can carry a one and a half ton payload into a 700 kilometer high orbit. But how do you get three completely different launchers off the ground? It's all about techniques different from Soyuz to Ariane to Vega. Soyuz is completely different with an all-Russian approach, whereas Ariane and Vega are both European and share some technical aspects. But what we are putting in place is a unique team, and Ariane Espace will look after all three launchers. We will benefit from synergies on a technical level, and also on an economic one. It's the whole reason for this launcher strategy that ESA has drawn up and handed over to Ariane Espace to manage. Procedures for the pre-launch, launch and post-launch phases have been standardized so the Ariane Espace team can work efficiently. For Vega there was no problem as the rocket was custom built for this. But for Soyuz the payload installation system needed to be modified to Kourou's standards which use a vertical loading system instead of Baikonur's horizontal one. What about Ariane 5? Is there news for the flagship launcher? Ariane 5 already has 15 years of service, so it's old as launchers go, although if it were a wine, it would be still maturing. We need to think about its future and its short-term future. The first development will be the midlife upgrade, which will allow Ariane to carry a bigger payload. The competition is already gearing up to launch slightly bigger satellites, mainly Russian, and we must do the same. Double satellite launches are becoming more common, and we have to launch bigger satellites.
One of Ariane's specialities is just that. A double launch is cheaper and more commercially attractive, and new, more powerful motors due for 2016 will allow Ariane to launch bigger, heavier satellites. Another new feature of this new version will be a reignitable motor in the final stage of the rocket, the part that houses the payload. This means the two satellites can be placed in different orbits. This flexibility is a plus when grabbing market share. But what does all this technology mean for the ordinary citizen? What's the payback for all this effort? The first aspect is access to space and beyond that to everything concerned with scientific research and space exploration. There are benefits that do affect our daily lives. Lots of television is now beamed by satellite. Telephony is now mainly done via satellite. We don't realize just how much of what we do down here every day depends on space. That's the first gain. The other aspect is work. I would even say expertise because we are constantly grappling with avant-garde technology that underpins thousands of highly skilled jobs. It's very important for the competitivity of European industry. 2011 will be a rich year for European rockets but also a vital one if the industry is to face the challenge of tougher competition. Innovation will be the key to remaining number one.